Hey guys, Josh from CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com. Today we're in Santa Barbara hiking to Inspiration Point. The trailhead for Inspiration Point is located about 15 minutes from downtown Santa Barbara. You can find the exact trailhead address in Google Maps and there's parking along the side of the road. Today we're in Santa Barbara hiking to Inspiration Point. Note that this place has basically no parking, so get here early if you want a spot or else you're gonna be walking for a while just to get to the trailhead. Also read the signs, cause there's lots of them. After finding a place to park, you'll follow the road to the official trailhead. I've never seen this before. There's like a bells. You can grab, I guess, for your bike. From here you'll pass the locked gate and start heading up on the tunnel trail towards the mountains with great views behind you of the Channel Islands. The first mile or so of this trail is basically just walking on this paved road up the mountain. This part of the trail is relatively uneventful as it's just a gradual walk up a paved road with no shade. Look at how great these views are. It's such a clear day and you can see all the way out to Santa Cruz Channel Islands out there. We reached a split, but we are staying to the left. So I've never been here before, but if I had to guess based on the map, Inspiration Point is probably up there somewhere. Maybe it's even the top, who knows. We've had a ton of rain this last week, so there's actually a decent amount of water. A little waterfall down there as you cross over this creek. As you crossed over this bridge, it was a nice shaded section with some great views of the creek below you. We've reached a sign for the Mission Creek Trailhead, and we are heading up to the left. We are right here, Inspiration Point. Right there. What's great about this area is there's a ton of different trails you can take to peaks and to waterfalls, so spend some time here if you like hiking. This split right here takes you to Bub's Trail and Inspiration Point. We're going that way. At this split, you'll be leaving the road and we'll head out on a single track for the rest of the trail. We're currently heading down to the water before pushing up Inspiration point. The creek was running pretty good when we got there and actually had some nice fall foliage as well. From here the trail actually splits off to seven falls so if you want to do a waterfall hike you can go that way. We may do it later, I'll see what time it is when I come back here. So after leaving this water crossing, it's basically uphill all the way to Inspiration Point now. From here, the trail starts its climb on an easy to follow single track that goes in and out of some shaded areas. There's the canyon we were in right there. But we're heading up this way. Note that there's not a lot of shade on this hike, so it's probably not a great summer hike. The trail had a few sections that were a little washed out because of the recent rains, but overall it's well trafficked and well maintained. We're currently heading up on switchbacks, but there has been a little bit of shade, which is nice. Eventually the trail will cross under some power lines and that's how you know you're getting close to Inspiration Point. We have officially made it to Inspiration Point. Inspiration Point is about a 180 degree view of Santa Barbara, the California coast and Pacific Coast Highway. It was incredible and easily worth the effort it took to get there. Also, I was totally wrong when I thought that was Inspiration Point earlier. <laughs> Look how clear the Channel Islands are out there. That is Anacapa, and then that's Santa Cruz. 
I think you actually might be able to see San Miguel out there too. I'm not sure if that's it, but I think so. A few more things you can see. There's downtown Santa Barbara with the wharf and the jetty right there. There's a better view of Anna Kappa, all the oil rigs. I spent a good 20 minutes up here just soaking it in and having a snack looking out over these views. After I was done, I did have enough time to hike Seven Falls, so I decided to head back to the split and see if I could actually find it. So I decided to do the short trail to Seven Falls, so once we got back to the water, we're heading up to the left. So when I hiked this trail, I went that way, but the official trail is actually that way. So if you're gonna go to the waterfalls, go that way, not these other ways. Before heading out on this trail, note that it's steep and slippery, both going up and going down to the falls. There's also a section that's so steep that they have a rope that you can use to steady yourself as you're going down and then back up. Here's the canyon, there's the waterfall, way down there. So here is the cutoff to Seven Falls. I would definitely recommend not doing this unless you want to do some rock scrambling uphill and you have an all trails map. It'd be super easy to get lost. This trail is so steep going down that there's a cable and a rope to hold on to. It's a little treacherous. We've made it to seven falls. When you reach the base of the canyon, you'll be at the bottom of the Seven Falls. As far as I know, this is the biggest one at around 15 feet tall. If you want to see where it got its name, Seven Falls, and the rest of the small cascading waterfalls, then you need to climb to the top of the first one. Each of these waterfalls are only a few feet in height, but they have nice little pools that they fall into, and it's a beautiful part of Santa Barbara. In order to get to that view, you actually have to scramble up this, so be really careful. There's lots of good holds, but it's definitely slippery. After hanging out at the waterfall for a little while, I climbed back out of the canyon and started the hike back to the car. Thanks for coming on this adventure in Santa Barbara with us. On the trail, we met Paulo, who runs SoCal Outdoor Explorer on YouTube. I will put a link to his channel here if you want to check it out, and we will see you on the next video.